So we're back to see if the 16 fundamental truths listed on ag.org, which is Assemblies of God's website, um, to see if it has scripture support for the things that are listed there as fundamental truths. The one we're looking at today is number two, the one true God. The one true God has revealed himself as the eternally self-existent I am, the creator of heaven and earth and the redeemer of mankind. He has further revealed himself as embodying the principles of relationship and association as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The question is, can you get to that understanding using the scripture references that they gave? First up is Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Again, if we're just taking things at face value and just observing what's actually written there, it's saying the Lord God is one God. The people of Israel and this book of Deuteronomy written by Moses makes it clear that there's a distinction between the Lord God and the other gods of the nations around them. Second is Isaiah chapter 43 verses 10 to 11. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. Again, just taking the observations of what's written there, the Lord God wanted to make himself clear. He wanted to reveal himself clearly that he is the only God, that there was never a God before him and there will not be one after him, and that he alone is the Savior. So far, these are pretty clear that Israel and the Lord God were revealing God as being one and being one that is not like other gods, being one that is before all and after all, and being the only Savior. Now we get to the part that, if we're being honest, is not the easiest to understand. It's not the easiest to grasp because the word Trinity itself does not show up in the Bible, but is there something in the scriptures that shows the concept of the Trinity being a real thing? Matthew 28, 19, Jesus says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So here Jesus clearly establishes the three persons of God. Last one is Luke chapter 3 verse 22. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So what do we notice here? Jesus was being baptized. The Holy Spirit, separate and different, clearly different, descended on him like a dove in the form of a dove. And the voice from heaven establishes fatherhood by saying to Jesus, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So this topic actually goes way deeper on the AG website. But even with what we read, it's clear that God revealed himself to Israel as one God. Jesus did not teach anything contradictory to that, but instead revealed that within the oneness of God existed three persons in perfect unity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm not going to pretend to understand completely what that means and how that works, but if you believe in Jesus, you trust Jesus. I trust Jesus. And if he reveals something about himself, if he reveals something about who he is and who God is because he was sent from God, then I can trust him with the concepts I cannot wrap my head around. So going back to the statement on AG's website about the one true God, the one true God has revealed himself as the eternally self-existent I am, the creator of heaven and earth, and the redeemer of mankind. He has further revealed himself as embodying the principles of relationship and association as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Based on the references that they gave, just for this specific portion of it, the one true God who has revealed himself as the eternally self-existent I am does have scripture support. The creator of heaven and earth, you can infer that, but it wasn't necessarily explicit in the scripture references. And the redeemer of mankind was explicit 
in the references they gave. And of course, like I said, with those last two verse references, he has further revealed himself as embodying the principles of relationship and association as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That clearly shows up. Jesus clearly teaches it. And if Jesus, someone that you trust, if you believe in him, talks about having the Father God and the Holy Spirit being separate yet connected and together, united perfectly with him, the Son, Look, I can't wrap my head around it again, but I trust him. And there is scripture support from Jesus himself and from other gospels to support that there are three persons in the one God. As always, if you want to follow along as we look at the other parts of this fundamental truth, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.